Hello, Alejandro. Hello, uh, Macarena, I'm going to share my screen. So let's start because uh, we don't have much time. So today we are going to talk about, uh, uh, we're, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, IPv4 and IPv6 net network uh, hijacking. First of all, let's briefly discuss the terminology. Many of us uh, already know it, but I want uh, to make sure that we speak the same language. First of all, what is a hijack? It is the illegitimate uh, um, empowerment or uh, uh, ownership of an IP network manipulating the BGP tables. And we also have um, another term that is an event. Basically, for the purpose of this document, it, an event will be any activity uh, related with um, the uh, uh, hijack. We also have the hijacker that is um, the actor that will uh, hijack the network. And finally, we have the uh, host that is uh, the victim of the hijack, the hijacked network. So what is the study that we did? And I'll briefly tell you the uh, story. This year, we had a talk with the people of Karignok. And uh, at LACNIC, we received uh, a question about statistics of network hijacking, particularly in our region. And we realized that, unfortunately, we didn't have that information available. And then we started searching about this information, about data relevant to um, network hijacking. And it is very difficult to get it. It was very difficult. And the only piece of information that was reliable and on real time uh, was a Twitter account that many of you know that is the at BGP stream. It's very good. I really recommend it to you. Uh, you follow it. And uh, so they process the data since January the 1st, 2016, up to 31st of May 2020. What do we have? Basically, when you uh, fetch a tweet, uh, here we are speaking of automated uh, data, we obtain all this. In Python, this um, is a data structure that is known as a dictionary. Basically, this is what you obtain from twi Twitter. The piece that I wanted to pay attention to is this part uh, after the text, because this brings all the relevant information. It's um, a hijack because there are other events, the hijacked prefix, the autonomous system, who uh, hijacked it, and a bit more information. How did we get this information? We used uh, three tools. One is the tweet scraper. It's very good. I really recommend it. You don't even need to be registered as a developer in Twitter. Then we have Python 3, and we use the um, API Ripe uh, 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 the API of RIPE and CC. So now let's start talking about the results that we obtained. This is the number of hijackings yearly from 2016 to 2020. Remember that for 2020, we only have until the 31st of May. So in, in the next slide, you'll see this better, but you see that there's a reduction in the number of uh, the hijacking of uh, prefixes as years go by. Here you have it in 2016 down to 2020. And remember that this is only until March 30th, May 31st, but there's a significant drop in the number of hijacks. And people may wonder why, but we already know that RPKI and IRR work very well. And even this graph, I like to overlap it with these two charts here that you see them very small, but this is the graph of the growth of the IPv6 routing table, and this is for IPv4. We see that despite the fact that the routing tables globally grow, there is a significant reduction in uh, the hijacking. Another thing that I wanted to show you is 
how are events distributed? Here is from 2016 to 2019, based on the year, uh, on the month of the year, from January to December. And we see that it is in November that we have the largest number of hijacks, followed by July. That is, next month we should be paying close attention if you don't have our if you have RPKI and IRR, be, pay attention to this. So we looked at the times of the day from zero midnight to 11 p.m. 23. We see that at about 4 p.m. 16 UTC, and this is 11. And it is important to point out that, well, I checked several tweets, but there's a 20 minute lag from the time that the event occurs and the tweet appears. So this is the time reported by Tweet Scraper after fetching the tweet of the, the account BGP stream. So here we have the RIR that receives more hijacking. Remember that uh, here, you can see RIPE and CC that on Thursday is the RIR that receives the hijacking and divided by week uh, days of the week. We also have the RIR that performs more hijacks and also divided by days. On, on uh, Thursday, the people of RIPE and CC, they are the, mm, the ones that uh, hijack more. And it's not surprising to see that the day of the week with the least hijackings in all the regions, Sunday is the day where uh, hijackers rest. An interesting thing, uh, frequency uh, table. Here you have the prefixes that receive more hijacks. And here we see the uh, slash 24, and here there's an IPv6 uh, prefix and uh, slash 44. And what is happening here? I remember perfectly well that this prefix doesn't have RPKI. So it's interesting to see that maybe 1110 slash 44, that apparently is very easy to um, even to uh, for a fat finger error. And uh, it doesn't appear here. And uh, this is the prefix uh, that a slash 24 is the most uh, frequent length uh, of the prefix. So the most frequent length of the prefix of IPv6 is a slash 48 and then a slash 32. The top 10 countries more affected, US, uh, Brazil in our region. This is the order, the United States, Brazil, India, China, Great Britain, Germany, etc. And the top 10 hijacking countries, the United States, 1,034 events, Brazil, Russia, India, etc., etc. Uh, curiosities. This autonomous system that we see here is the one that has made more hijacks from uh, uh, 2016 to May this year. And and it's interesting to see that this is a reserved autonomous system. So it has, a, this is a hijacked autonomous system. They conducted 36 hijacks between 2016 and 2018. Look at this, this is very interesting. So this is everything I had to tell you. This is all so far. Any questions, any doubts, I'm ready to ask. Thank you, Alejandro. We, you have a couple of minutes for questions. You can use the Q and A panel. <clears throat> what a surprise! There, there's something. I don't know whether it's a question. Uh, indeed, there's a question by Maria Ines Ortega, who says, 
the hosting providers, uh, do they have the capacity to detect these hijacks? That's, it's an interesting question, Maria Ines. Let me tell you that detecting as such, well, everybody uh, would have that possibility, but uh, you have to pay close attention to the fact that there may be false positives. Now, what happens in a network hijacking world? Traditionally, you have a prefix that will be announced by an autonomous system. So you need to have the capacity to detect that if that same prefix is being announced by another autonomous system, it is true, it is legitimate, it may be legitimate or it may not be legitimate. So I dare say that you need a bit of a artificial intelligence and I would recommend that you give mom, well, I'm going to put that in the chat, it has a very good service, not reporting uh, network um, hijacking. And so having said that, you register, dupont.net and you put your prefix your autonomous system one part is free and the other one you have to pay but it's very good what happens if if your prefix is being announced by an aes and all of a sudden there's another aes that starts offering you receive an email and there the rpki and irr will um, activate and you'll be informed now, if we were to do it, it's also feasible in a LACNIC with a Ford process, and there's a portal of the Ford process. We also report the prefixes that are being announced, but that for some reason have something in the RPKI or IRR that do not match the information in the routing table. For instance, if you have RPKI and it says that a prefix needs to be announced with as a 6505 then in uh, and you see 508 then our report will uh indicate it correctly so that might be of help any other questions thank you ali